Hello, I'm Dr. Fred Templeman and I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about the signs of aging, the things that happen to us that allow other people to, simply by looking at us, decide that we're older than we were perhaps the last time that they saw us. So we're going to be talking amongst other things about the eyes because the eyes happen to be the place on the body that start showing the aging process more rapidly and more demonstrably than any other place in the body, even though aging is taking place everywhere. And what may be of interest to you is the idea that aging doesn't start at 40 or 50 or 60. Those are the times when we can clearly see that aging is going on, but it actually starts about the late 20s. And the reason that it starts around the eyes is because there's tremendous movement of the eyes. When you think about what part of your body may move more rapidly than your heart or more often, it's your eyes. And so there is a constant stress from mechanical movement. We're going to talk about what gives the eyes their youthful shape. We're going to talk about how these soft tissues are held in place and what can we do when they begin to lose their structure and wrinkles and sagging begins to appear. Now, let me just remind you that I have grandchildren and one of them said to me, you know, Grandpa, he was looking at a picture of me when I graduated from medical school and then he was looking at my face. He said, Grandpa, you're melting. And, and really that's a pretty apt comparison because when we look at the soft tissues of the body, particularly around the face, and we see the effects of collagen, which is the underpinning strength, being removed either through free radical damage or through radiation, we do indeed see the effect of gravity and we look as if we are slowly melting and folding as it occurs. So, what is collagen? What is this underpinning that gives us our youthful appearance? And what happens to it and how can we do something about it? First of all, let's think of collagen in its smallest element. The amino acids that make up all proteins and which make up collagen, and there's a, a special grouping of them, is like a single pearl. The structure is wonderful but alone it may not be what you want. So if you put them together in a small group, you may have something that would be an appropriate earring. If you then have this small grouping which could be called a peptide when we're talking about proteins, and you put it together with many, many more amino acids, then you can have something like a necklace, collagen. And collagen is overbound, it's rolled around, there are three strands to it, two of them are similar and the third one sort of wraps around and gives it strength. Collagen is the most abundant protein in the body and while there are different kinds of collagen we're going to be talking only about type 1 collagen which is the one that is in skin, in bones, in muscles, in tendons and it's the one that changes most easily. So collagen as a fibril can be compared to the twisted steel in a steel cable. And in fact, in some tests of resiliency, collagen fibrils are stronger than steel cable. Now, they are built into tendons. They are also built into a lattice work structure that holds all of the soft tissues together. Now, in the tendons, they are in a linear form, and that is the way that most collagen fibrils are. But when they're built into a lattice work, you have one of nature's strongest formations. It, I don't know whether you know it or not, but a termite mound has to be pretty much destroyed by dynamite because of the three-dimensional um, way that it is constructed of little arches and that's the way that collagen is constructed in the face. So when you think about melting, when you think about the effects of age, and when you think about what do I want to change and restore to try and make this happen a lot less rapidly in my case than in the case of my neighbors, you need to understand collagen and think about it as a structural material. Thank you.